Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 6.4, Transforming Sinusoidal Functions. Before we get started, let's talk about sine x first. Uh, I just wanted to remind you what it looks like. It starts at the 0, 0, goes up to the maximum, back to the middle, down to the minimum, and then back up to the middle. Of course, the maximum is 1 and the minimum is negative 1. y equals 0 is the axis. And we just connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner, and that gives us the sine graph. Um, I just wanted to point out that this actually can get split into four sections. So from here to here is 0 to 90, and it corresponds with the um, cast rule as well. So this would count as quadrant 1. Um, if we look from here to here, this is 90 to 180, which is quadrant 2. From here to here is quadrant 3, 182, 270, and from here to here, 270 to 360, that is quadrant 4. So these actually correspond to the values in the CAS system. We're just taking those values and graphing them uh, on the x and y. So that is why we have four sections for our graph. The domain of sine x is x in r, just in case you forget, and the range is y in r, such that negative 1 is less than equal to y is less than equal to 1. If we look at cos x, it's very similar. It starts at the maximum, goes to the middle, down to the bottom, back up, and then all the way back up to the maximum. So again, connecting the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. Oops, it's not quite good enough, so I'm going to do it again. Curvy and attractive manner, like that. And you can see that, again, I have a maximum of 1, a minimum of negative 1, and y equals 0. This is cos x. I'm just going to label it. Um, and again, we get four sections from 0 to 90. That gives us quadrant 1. 90 to 180 gives us quadrant 2, 180 to 270 gives us quadrant 3, and 270 to 360 gives us quadrant 4. I'm just labeling those quadrants right now. And so again, those correspond to the four quadrants in CAST. Um, and the domain and the range are the same for cos and for sine. So the only difference is really where you start, right? If you wanted to start at a maximum, then you would use cos. If you want to start in the middle, you would use sine. Um, so this is going to be really helpful when we try to find the equations for um, for some of the graphs that we're going to be given. And be because the only way to choose between sine and cos is just, do I have a maximum and minimum? Are those easier to find? Or is the middle easier to find? And in some cases, you know, you can, well, actually in all cases, you can use either or. So let's talk about the transformations first, and then we'll move on to actually finding the equations of some of the graphs. Um, so remember that the transformations are y equals a f of kx minus d plus c, where a is the vertical uh, dilation, k is the horizontal dilation, so dilations are flips, stretches, and compressions. d is the horizontal translation, so moving left and right, and c is the vertical translation moving up and down. So when we're talking about sine and cos, we can just replace the f of x with sine, so it becomes a sine k of x minus d plus c, or we can replace it with cos, then we get y equals a cos x uh, k x minus d plus c. Um, and in neither of these cases, uh, we know that a is specifically the amplitude, so the vertical stretch of this is going to become the amplitude, it just gets pulled out away from the axis. The period which is how long it goes, is 360 over k. So that's where that comes from. So either we're getting stretched out or um, compressed for the k value. d is the phase shift, so moving it left and right. And c is the axis, OK? So um, the reason that the period is 360 over absolute value k is, first of all, remember that period is always positive. And then secondly, uh, when we are inside of here, k x minus d. This is actually in degrees because we're using cos or sine. So you do sine of a degrees or cos of a degrees. So when we do 360 over, we're actually converting it to be a regular unit. And that's why we have to do 360 over k. 
So let's try some of these. I've just got five examples and then we're going to be done. So the first thing that we can look at is we're going to think about the maximum and the minimum because we do have two formulas. Actually, let me write them on the first page here. We know that the amplitude is equal to the max minus the min divided by 2. So the difference of the 2 divided by 2. And the axis is the mean, so max plus min divided by 2. Okay, so if we have these two formulas, then we're going to be guaranteed to get the right answer and we're not estimating anything. So the max here is going to be 3 and the min is negative 3, so that makes it pretty easy to find the amplitude. The amplitude is going to be 3, the axis is y equals 0. Um, so then we're going to have to worry about um, the period next, and so our period, you can see, it starts here and it goes to 120. So you could either go from here to here, making sure that we're going to the same place, not just the same place on the Y, but also in the same direction. So even though this is also on that same spot, it's going downwards, whereas when we started we were going upwards. So we want to go to the same spot and be going upwards. And we can choose any spot and do that. So you could have chosen the maximum to the maximum. This should be exactly the same distance or the minimum to the minimum, that should be exactly the same distance as well, so it doesn't matter what you pick. I could have, have picked something like right here, but that would be <laughs> maybe a little bit more difficult, but um, you can see that as I draw that in, this is exactly the same length. Okay, so the period is 120, we can see that. So that tells us that K, well, we know that period is equal to 360 over K, so that tells us that k is equal to 360 over period, so it's basically the same thing. So our k is going to equal 360 over 120, which gives us 3. So now we have a lot of the values from our equation. We're just going to have to do one more. And the phase shift is going to depend on your sine or cos. So depending which one you choose, that is how we're going to decide what the phase shift is. So let's say that I'm going to choose sine because we start at 0, 0 and sine is like this. It goes upwards and we want to go all the way to here. So we could actually just use positive sine. So if I wanted to use positive sine in this case, then I can see that my phase shift is 0 d is equal to 0. So my equation would be y equals 3, that's amplitude, sine k 3 x plus 0 plus 0 plus the axis which is 0, okay? So that's all I would have to do. If I wanted to use negative sine, then instead of starting here, I would actually start here because that's negative sine starts in the middle and goes downwards, okay? So in that case my uh, phase shift is equal to 60, or I could even use negative, negative 60 right here. Um, it doesn't matter, actually. You can just choose whichever one you want, or we could have chosen another one. I think it's a 180 over here, or another one, or another one. It doesn't matter. So just choose the one that's most convenient. There are tons and tons and tons of correct qu equations for these graphs. So, in fact, there is infinite number, so you could actually choose any, but you should definitely choose the most convenient, okay? So we're going to do negative sine, so it's negative 3 sine 3x minus 60 plus 0. So if I want to use negative sine, I can, or I could use cos as well. So if I wanted to use positive cos, then I'm going to start at the maximum, and I'm going to work my way downwards, and you can see that the phase shift is equal to half of 60, so this is 30. So I'll write y equals 3 cos 3x three minus 30 plus 0, okay? And if I wanted to use negative cos, you can see that um, maybe I'll start on this side. You could start down here as well. Um, so I'm going to start over here. You can see that's negative 30, so d equals negative 30. So y equals negative 3 cos, because I'm using my negative cos, uh, 3x plus 30 plus 0. Okay, 
So I've had, I have four equations. Um, it says we should use one sine and one cosine. So for the others, we'll just use one. But you can choose any of these, and they should work. So the next one will be, again, I think I'm going to want to use sine. Um, but let's worry about that afterwards. Let's first find the max and the min. So the max is equal to 5, and the min is equal to negative 5. So that makes it nice and easy because amplitude is going to equal 5 and the axis C is going to equal 0. And then we can just find the amplitude, or sorry, not the amplitude, the period. The period starting here and going to here is 180, so period equals 180. That tells us that K is equal to 360 over 180, which is 2, so it's a compression again. And um, Let's see what else we want to do, the phase shift. So using sine, positive sine, I know that my phase shift is zero because I'm starting in the middle and going upwards. So y equals um, five sine kx, two x plus zero, uh, plus zero. So y equals five sine two x. If I use, let's say I'm gonna use positive cos, then you can see that the D is equal to 45 now because we would want to start this on the axis so I moved over 45 so that means that Y equals 5 cos 2 X minus 45 plus 0 okay so you notice that the amplitude stays the same the C stays the same and the K stays the same in all of these but it's just the whether it's negative or positive, and the phase shift that change depending on which we choose, sine or cos. So why don't you pause the video and try the rest for yourself. Find the max and min, and then find the period and k, and then you'll find uh, the phase shift. So choose, let's say for this next one, I'd like you to choose positive sine, and I'd like you to choose negative cos. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and do that, and I will come back in a second. Pause now. Okay, so hopefully you found that the maximum was 5 and the minimum was negative 3. This one's a little bit more tricky because they're not equal equidistant from the middle. So we'll do the amplitude is equal to max minus min divided by 2, which is 5 plus 3 divided by 2 is 4. 5 plus 3 divided is 4, yeah, that's right, okay, <laughs> and the C is max plus min divided by 2, so 5 minus 3 divided by 2 gives us 1, um, so we think that the axis is right here at y equals 1, and we should be 4 apart on either side, which we are. Um, you can see that the period here is from 0 to 180, so 180, that tells us that K is equal to 360 over 180 equals 2. So using positive sign, uh, I can see I've run out of space right here, so I'm just going to grab these guys and move them down. Okay, so using positive sign, I can see that uh, it starts right here, or you could have started it here, so depending on which one you chose. So hopefully you've written Y equals four sine oops equals four sine uh, two x minus um, this is another forty five so hundred thirty five plus one or maybe you wrote y equals four sine two x plus forty five plus one and either of these works because I could start from here which is 45 in the in the left direction or here which is 135 in the right direction okay for the cos we can see that well actually it would have been easier if I had given you positive cos but I didn't I gave you the negative cos so <coughs> if you had a choice on your own you should probably choose the positive cos but I gave you negative cos so we're going to start right here so we should get y equals um, 4 negative 4, sorry, negative 4 cos times 2 of 2x two minus 90 plus 1. 
because that I'm starting right at the left 90, but you could also start at the right 90, or sorry, this is the right 90 and this is the left 90, so you get y equals negative 4 cos 2x plus 90, and those both work, okay, as long as you have the negative. All right, so go ahead and do D and E on your own, and I'm just going to come back with the solution, so pause now. Okay, so welcome back. Hopefully you have done D and E. Um, you can look at the answers here, or you can go on the website and uh, download the PDF. It's also in the description below, the notes version, not the blank notes version. And um, of course you only need one sine and one cos, but I've just written a whole bunch of them out for you, just in case you decided to do something else. You can check your answer. Um, the first thing I did was I found the increments, so this is four pieces, so 90 divided by four, that gives us 15 for each. And then I found the period was starting from the middle 15 to 195, so 195 minus 15 is 180, that gives me the period. And then we can just use uh, our formulas for the rest and figure out what the phase shift is, okay? So that's how you do it. Let's move on to E. So for this one, I did something really similar. Um, I just, I found that each of these was five, and I found the bottom to the bottom. It's up to you where you want to start, uh, as long as you go to the same place the next time it's it happens again. So from negative 20 to 70, that's 90 uh, degrees. And then I split it into four pieces, so from the minimum to the maximum is 45, 90 divided by 2, and for each of these pieces, that's 90 over 4, so half again of 90 over 2, right? So that's how you do it. You can just take that period and divide it into four parts, and that gives you the values, and you can get the x values really, really uh, accurately, as opposed to just estimating what they are. So it's a good idea to do it, okay? So I found the maximum, the minimum, and I have my period, and then my k, and then I just use the phase shift to find my sines and coses. So don't go way off the y-axis, okay? Don't just like try to find one that's way out in infinity over here just to be smart. You really want to just find the most convenient one. And uh, so hopefully that answers all of your questions. If it didn't, then feel free to ask me in class, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.